Hey everybody, this is Fran Frischella, draft expert and basketball junkie. To everybody who's watching, let's get our friends at General Manager Games the subscribers they deserve. Just press that red subscriber button and immerse yourself in sports AI through GM Games content. And on Twitter, it's GM underscore games. Let's get after it. Let's go. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Out of the Park Baseball 22 here on GM Games with the Colorado Rockies. This is Aaron. And as always, before we jump into this episode, I would ask that if you like what you've watched here so far, that you head over to my channel, Around the World Sports. Drop me a subscribe over there. Um, I've got... Right now, I'm running two different series. I have a Detroit Tigers Let's Play uh, through Out of the Park 22 and a Franchise Hockey Manager 7 playthrough uh, as the Bruins. It's about 30 episodes in over there, so lots of uh, catch-up to do if you want to uh, come on over and check that out as well. At any rate, this is going to be a, I think, a pretty long episode as my goal is to make it up to the trade deadline today. Uh, so that means we will be doing uh, international free agency uh, as well as first year player draft so we are 25 and 35 16 and a half games out of first um our big off-season acquisition joey gallo hitting just 209 does have 13 home runs on pace for 35 and 86 offense is really struggling this year which is a bit of a surprise we are 15th in home runs which is a shocker considering we are the colorado rockies uh, pitching staff has been slightly improved. Bullpen's actually been above average. Uh, so I have a feeling the offense is going to come down to earth while the pitching staff is going to, or the offense is going to improve while the pitching staff is going to struggle as we go down the stretch here. Uh, from a prospect perspective, our t the two main ones that we're keeping an eye on, Jack Leiter, Drew Romo, uh, and Zach Veen, I should, uh, we'll take a look at him too. Leiter, 4-0 and 7 starts in Double A. Uh, he's looking pretty sharp. We're going to leave him there until that control starts to develop a little bit. So he'll probably stay in double-A most of the season. Drew Romo is starting to hit. We're going to call him up to double-A. Uh, actually, let's call him up to double-A now. Let's give him a bit of a shot here in double-A. And then Zach Veen, who is currently in double-A, uh, is hitting 345, 423, 605. So um, he's probably ready for AAA from a stat perspective, but from a rating perspective, I want to give him a little more time. I don't think he's quite ready yet. So uh, let's get going. Let's get through June and let's get to the fun stuff in July. So we take on the Phillies. We're on a six game road trip here into Philadelphia and Cincinnati. So let's let's see how it goes. Oh, that's right. We did fire our, 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 our general manager. We're going to bring in Matt Klintak. Um, that was the last thing we did in the last episode. Uh, so let's play game one here against the Phils. It's a one nothing loss. So again, the offense continues to struggle. It's not the pitching. It's our offense this year. Who would have thought that as, as the Rockies? We lose 6-2. to two, And we win game three to avoid being swept. Win 3-1. to one. We go on to Cincinnati now. We win two to one. So again, offense continues to be a, a bit of a problem. Ramiel Tapia is injured for three to four weeks now. Uh, so we have to call up an outfielder. Do we even have an outfielder to call up? <laughs> call up Crash Chris Davis and stick him out there and see how he does. Uh, I don't really think we have another option. Um, Actually, you know what I think I'm going to do? This may sound... No, I'm not going to do it yet. He's... Well, I guess... I mean, he's no worse than anything else, and he can get on base. We're going to call up Jamison Hanna, and we're going to stick him right in the lineup uh, in center field and see how he does. And that's going to move Taylor to left, which is fine. And I don't suspect he's going to hit well, but... It is what it is. I will leave against lefties like that. Uh, get Hannah out there. Again, it's not about this season. It's about next season and moving forward. So, uh, all right. So we've won two in a row. Schedule, we've won two in a row. We've won three of our last five. Can we win again? We cannot. Can we win the series against Cincinnati? We cannot. Oh, that's a tough one. We lose Josh Naylor now for five weeks. Okay. 
Um, Devin Mann, uh, we got to pull somebody off the 40 man, I guess. Um, Hilliard is going to be, that's not what I wanted to do. Hilliard is going to be DFA'd. And Devin Mann will come up, and I think we're just going to stick him in the lineup at first. He's a good defensive first baseman. Uh, the bat is okay. He's actually leadoff for him wouldn't be a bad idea as a, as a first baseman. He's got good eye, so we'll see how that works out. Not anticipating much, but all right, let's move on. Three games against San Diego. So we lost two out of three against Phillies, two out of three against the Reds. It's three losses in a row. Four losses in a row. And we finally win one. So we've played nine games. We've gone three and six in those nine. Four-game series against Milwaukee. Back-to-back -back victories. We lose 10-5, to five and we lose. And Charlie Morton gets hurt again. Okay. Well, the injuries are piling up here a little bit in uh, at the end of June. It's not really what we wanted, but uh, who gets called up? I mean, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we will call back up. Take Josh Green off of the 40-man. We'll call Dolis back up. Get back into the pitching staff. Put Murphy back in there. Dolis will just be a long man. All right, let's move on. Let's keep going. See if we can win two out of three. We can't. So we have now uh, uh, we have now lost. Uh, we've played twelve games. We are what three and nine in those twelve games so far this month. Is that right? Four and four and nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four and nine in our last thirteen. We're gonna finish off the month against Oakland. Uh, we'll take a look at stats and we will get to the international. Signing so game one against Oakland, five seven seven to five loss, and the final game of the month of June is a loss. So we are twenty nine and forty six. Um, it's just it 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 the development hasn't been there or the improvement hasn't been there. Um, and I don't want to spend a ton of money on on players that are below average, which is why I didn't make a lot of moves with the team here. Um, but we're going to, I mean, we're going to have to make some moves someplace. The offense is struggling. The pitching is struggling now. Um, yeah. I mean, we're going to have to do something. What that is, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm not, you know, we're not, we're not talking about mortgaging the farm here or anything like that. Lighter, Romo, Veen, those are, that's that new wave. So we need to just hold on until those guys are ready. Um, Romo's up to five star. Jack Lighter's now six and oh. All right. So, yeah, I mean, we build around Lighter, Romo, Veen, uh, Naylor, and Gallo. And Brendan Rodgers, potentially, I think is, is what we build around. Um, but we'll see. All right, so we'll look at the stats here in a second. We're back in last place. Let's look at the international amateurs and see if there's anybody we want to throw some money at. Uh, uh, Raul Estrada is the only decent ball player here. Our scouting is average. Their scouting is average. But if OSA is more accurate than we are in this case, he's elite. He's a baseball rat, high loyalty, high work ethic, low greed. Raul Estrada is going to get $5 million from us. All right, um, player development. Clark Schmidt got better. He's five and five this year after going one and fourteen a year ago. Murphy declines a little bit. Uh, still pitched well. Morton, we just have to move on from. Um, he's just going to continue to get hurt. Charlie uh, Buster Posey has uh, hit okay, but you know, no future, no future with us. 
Uh, Rollison uh, is pitching okay in double A. Lambert is pitching okay in double A. We should probably call him up at some point. Let's call him up to triple A now. And disable the AI promotion. Uh, anybody else? Some players got better. Some players got significantly better, actually. Andrew Patrick. Wow. Oh, wait. I'm looking at the wrong numbers. Okay. <laughs> I was looking at OSA numbers, and that was I, that was pretty crazy. Uh, yeah. I mean, some of our younger players got really good. Um, Mike Trout, AL Batter of the Month. Uh, Juan Soto, NL Batter of the Month. Shane Bieber wins the Pitcher of the Month. Austin Adams for San Diego wins the NL Pitcher of the Month. Josh Lau is the Rookie of the Month in the American League. And Shumpei Yoshikawa is the Pitcher of the Month or the Rookie of the Month in the National League. All right, uh, pitching. We've been getting some better performances, without question, than, than what we got last season. Michael King has been pretty good. Uh, he's been our best pitcher, 4-8 and eight with a 3-3-8 ERA. Uh, his FIP is right around there as well, so I'm completely satisfied with that. Kluber's 3-8 and eight with an ER, even ERA of 7. Uh, his FIP's 4.42. He's just given up a ton of hits, 125 hits in 90 innings. Freeland's been better than he was last year. Radiel Martinez has been great. Patrick Murphy's been really good as well. Uh, those have probably been our two best pitchers. Uh, Clark Schmidt uh, has pitched much better than he did last season. Um, we signed a bunch of waiver wire pitchers, Wendelkin, Duplantier, and Hamilton. Uh, Hamilton's at a 402 ERA, Duplantier's at a 502, and Wendelkin's at a 4.5. So they've all been fine. Um, Claudio uh, is probably getting overused, uh, probably facing some righties and getting hit pretty hard. And Chafin, who I expected to be good, has been meh. He's been okay. I mean, he's been literally average. So we've been getting some better pitching performances. You know, there's still nobody here, with the exception of maybe King, Martinez, and Schmidt, that are long-term solutions for this rotation. But uh, um, you know, we'll continue to make changes until something works. Lineups, and then this is where it's a bit surprising. We we just uh, um, we just. Uh, we're not hitting. We're, we're just not hitting, uh, really, anywhere. Ali Sanchez leads us in war at 1.4, and that's mostly derived from his defense. Brandon Crawford has continued to hit pretty well, but again, not a long-term solution. He's 35. Uh, in fact, we'll probably try to move him. Um, Joey Gallo, the average is at 204. The OPS is down to 738. He's not hitting either. He struck out 99 times in 265 at-bats. Jamison Hanna has acclimated himself nicely to the majors. 13 for his first 33. Um, I'll take it. And if those continue to develop, to develop, he's our leadoff hitter. Colton Welker is at about 300. Um, he's doing okay. Posey's okay. Rogers okay. I mean, it's just a lot of okay, right? I mean, nothing here is great. Um, so let's, uh, let's see if there are any offers out there for Corey Kluber. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time digging through offers. I'll do that stuff offline. Um, so when I get probably through the draft, I'll probably pause for a minute and spend some time uh, trying to make some deals. And we'll come back and I'll, I'll show you what I did. I don't want to spend all too much time doing that. But Um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing. I, I need a bat. You know, Nick Castellanos can hit. He can't field, but he can hit. Um, obviously, I'd prefer a younger player, but, you know, I'm not going to be picky. We're not going to re-sign Kluber. So, you know, if I can't get a younger player, I would at least want somebody who is... Um, Controllable, someone that we have for an extended period of time. Yeah, there's just not much there. 
Not much there. And same thing I'm assuming with Charlie Morton. And nothing. Okay. All right. Well, that's fine. So let's uh, let's get back to it. I want to get up to the draft. So let's keep simming ahead. We lose three to one and twelve, and we win two to one. All right. So Green gets DFA'd. Two to one and eleven. So again, offense is struggling. Pitching is keeping us in it. Surprisingly, Gallo hits a sixteenth home run. Uh, Michael King goes seven strong. Bullpen comes to play today, and we win. So that works. Uh, team schedule. One more game against the Brewers. And we win 2-1 to one again. So now we take on the Cardinals at home. That's three wins in a row. Naylor suffers a setback. So he's done for basically the rest of the season. Uh, that's disappointing. Uh, but... It is what it is. Let's look at the box score here as the offense finally gets moving a little bit. Jamison Hanna, two for five, three runs knocked in. Joey Gallo goes three for five. Clark Schmidt picks up the win. So a lot of good in this one here. A lot of good. Ali Sanchez with two runs scored. And we have won three games in a row. Can we make it four? We can as we win 6-3, but Devin Mann is now down with an injury. So... We're now down to our third first base option. Uh, is it Matt Beatty, I guess. Yeah, I guess it's Matt Beatty. Come on down. And then against lefties. Let's try Peraz. No, we'll put Welker. Welker at first. McKinstry at third and Peraza at short. Okay. So we've won four in a row now. Welker with a three run home run. Kluber picks up the win. So nice little stretch of baseball here as we look for the sweep against the Cardinals. We look for a sweep against the Cardinals. And we get it as we win 12-2. to two. All right, so Ramiel Tappy is back. I think this is the end of Josh Fuentes in, uh, in Colorado. Let's call Tapia back up. So we got to, But I think I'm going to stick with Taylor, Hannah, and Gallo in the outfield. I mean, it's by far our best, um, our best uh, defensive outfield. Taylor, Hannah, I mean, they're all, look at those ratings. 83 with really, really good uh, defensive ratings. Center field, his arm isn't great, but he's a center fielder. And then Taylor is just elite at all three. So we're going to stick with that as our uh, as our backup outfield. Marwin Gonzalez isn't hitting, so he's going to the bench. And Taylor is coming in, and we're going to stick. Uh, yeah. I'm going to stick Hannah out there. We'll bat him at the bottom of the lineup, though. I just I don't want to expose him against lefties just yet. So another big win for us. Joey Gallo, uh, homers, Fuentes, homers, and we has five RBIs, and we send him down. Um, Murphy moves to 3-0. and All right, so we sweep the Cardinals, win five games in a row. We take on the Cubbies leading up to the draft. And we beat the Cubs 9-3. to So, yeah, I know. You didn't like either of those. Uh, top 100 prospects. We don't have anybody. Let's look. We'll look at the box score in a second. Uh, minor league system rankings. We are 9th. Lighters 27th now. He's now 6-0 and with a 3-2-0. Uh, just need that control to get a little better. And he'll get that bump to AAA. Uh, Acevedo was an international signing a year ago. Uh, we'll stay where he is. Romo's up to 45th. Not really hitting it in double-A. Uh, Estrada was our pick this season. And Andrew Patrick came out of nowhere. He's now up to the number 49 overall prospect. That's nice. All right, let's look at the box score. See how things went in uh, this game against the Cubs. 
So Rogers goes three for three. Gallo goes 0 for five. Hannah four for five, hitting 377 for us uh, so far. Michael King with another win. He's five and eight. ERA at 319. So how many is that? Six in a row? Seven in a row? One, two, three, four, five, six wins in a row for the Rockies. Can we get? Can we make it lucky number seven? We can, and we are. We're hitting. We're finally starting to hit. Look at that: ten runs, six runs, twelve runs, nine runs, ten runs. Rogers goes four for five. Gallo scores a couple runs. Uh, Jamison Hanna, three more hits, up to an even four hundred on the season. Gallo with home run number nineteen. Uh, more good pitching out of the bullpen. And we pick up another win. Seven wins in a row. Can we make it eight? No. And we lose. So Buster Posey uh, doesn't want to be a backup, which is understandable. Um, but I'm not going to do anything about that right now. So let's uh, play this last game, and we'll... Take a quick look at the stats, and then we'll get back to the draft. So can we win here? We 16-7. to 16-7. Did Hannah get hurt? A strange rib cage. Jamison Hannah, just an absolute monster in his first 18, 19 games. He's hitting 400 with a 1.1 war. So that was a good call-up by us. Brendan Crawford. Brandon Crawford, excuse me. Uh... Five runs knocked in. Joey Gallo hit the 20 home run mark. McKinstry's got hit four, had four runs knocked in. So, yeah. Who pitched in this one? Kluber went six and two thirds to pick up the win. Ooh, Radio Martinez got lit up in his uh, for the first time in this one. So that's a good run of games for us, guys. That is a very, very good run of games for us. Where does that leave us in the power rankings? Up to 18th. From a standings perspective, we are in fourth, uh, 37 and 48. We don't have any leaders in anything, but uh, yeah, so far, you know, I mean, this has been an improvement over last season where we only won, I think it was 50, was it 53 games? 56 games? How many games did we win last year? 54 and 108. So we need to go 17 and 60. The rest of the way to, um, to to have a better record than what we had last year. We've cut it a run and a half off of our team ERA. Cool. So, yeah, we get, uh, let's see, we get anybody back soon? Not really. We get Mann back in two weeks. Morton back in two weeks. Naylor's out for two more months. Um, Gallo's on pace for 38-90. Uh, still three war because he still plays really good defense. So he's coming around. I'm okay with that. Let's get to the draft. And we have the first pick in the draft. And I believe it was a pretty weak draft if i remember correctly yeah there were virtually no uh no pitchers that are um i would say first pick worthy um i think we were it was drew jones that we were going to go after right do we have the money to go after drew jones yeah we do okay um i I mean, I'm not. I'm really not thrilled with Drew Jones, Drew Jones as um, the number one pick in the draft. But he can already play defense in the majors. He's got good base running. Um, he's still a few years away, but I mean, he could easily be a 30 home run. You know, he could easily be a 30 30 guy uh, if if the uh, the the power develops. If his contact gets a little better, I think we'll be okay. We'll continue to invest in the development, and that's really you're gonna. You can see a difference when you when you put money into the development budget. So, I think that's what we're gonna do, and I think it's going to be Drew Jones, who is the number one pick in the draft. I like Tamar Johnson. Um, he's been an MVP in some other playthroughs that I've had. Another one who's already ready defensively, but I think the pick is Drew Jones. So move on to our next pick. 
and I think Jason Jones was going to be that pick. I did. I was considering him as the number one pick. Who do they think we should take? Ryan Clifford, who is a right fielder who's not even on this list. Where is he? Right there. Yeah, no, I'm not taking him with the uh, with with my supplemental pick. Uh, Jackson Ferris. If, he, if Ferris is there with my the top pick in the next round, I will take him. I f- no. Do I go Ferris now? I think I'm going to go Ferris now. He's a lefty. 6'4", 190 pounds. He's already throwing 94 to 96. Has the potential to throw re- three really good pitches. Uh, yep, Jackson Ferris. And hopefully Jones is still there. He is perfect. So we're going to spend a lot of money on this draft, but that's okay. Our top three picks are going to be expensive, but that's fine. Clifford is still there. I don't want him. Let's see if there are any pitchers that are actually hitters. Riley Stanford. Mm. There's not a whole heck of a lot left. It's fine. You want us to take Clifford, we'll take Clifford this round. I'm okay with that. Uh, Are there any pitchers left? No. Wow. This was a tough draft to have the number one overall pick. Caleb Gilbert is 25 already. He's 25 years old already. Where did that come from? Um, Travis Sanders, good eye. He's good with the bat. He's never going to hit for a high average or a lot of power, but he's good defensively. Got a good eye. Sure, Travis Sanders. He will. He wants a lot of money. I don't want to spend that much on him. Alexander Diaz. Juco. Um, again, pretty good with the glove, uh, decent bat. So Alexander Diaz, yeah, he only wants 40 K. Not that I need to skimp, but, um, you know, if we can not spend $3 million on a player who will never make the majors, uh, that's probably what you want to do. Uh, all players, Ian Ritchie is an average bat, even though he's not really a, ugh. It's, this is bad. Not a lot of talent. Yeah, I'm not thrilled with Drew Jones as our first pick. Um, I mean, if he develops, then you know maybe I'm completely wrong, and that's kind of the hope. But here, Justin Henry Malloy out of Georgia Tech, 22 year old third baseman, and we will let the AI finish because I can't. Honestly, I it, it's like staring, you know, at the same name a thousand times. It's just not anything I I am I am interested in. So let's negotiate. I don't I don't know that we're going to be able to sign Ferris now that I think about it. No, we can. Wait a minute. I'm not on commissioner mode, am I? No. Okay. Oh right, because we've got so much extra money on the on the books, it's going to allow us. Yeah, so we can sign all these guys because we had so much extra money lying around. We can go over our draft, uh, our draft budget. That's right. Uh, that's right. Okay, so we will sign everybody, get them all locked down. So Drew Jones, Jackson Ferris, Jason Jones. We had three picks in the top forty-one. We pick up a cent- uh, center fielder who is already defensively major league ready, has 30 home run potential. Jackson Ferris, an 18-year-old lefty, uh, has three really solid pitches, could develop into a mid-rotation starter. And then Jason Jones, uh, good defensive third baseman, again, 30 home run power, uh, only 18 years old. Um, So yeah, so those are our first three picks, and I am content with that. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to step away for a minute. Uh, it'll be a minute for you. 
uh, and I am going to see about uh, potentially making some deals. And I know it's a little unrealistic to, you know, come back on July 12th and all of a sudden have three different trades made, but um, it's better than coming back for a day and then, you know, going away and then coming back and then going away. So, or at least I think it is. So I'm going to, I'm going to pause here and I'm going to spend some time offline trying to come up with some deals that make us better for the long term. And if, and when uh, I will show you what those deals were. So hang tight. I'll be back in just a sec. All right, we're back. It is a day later, I guess, technically two days later, because we had an off day. So it's two days later and we have made some, we've made two fairly substantial moves. And I don't think we're done yet, um, but we've made two substantial moves. And we'll just pull them up here in the major transactions logs, and we'll take a look. So the first deal on Monday, July 11th, was trading Corey Kluber and a couple of uh, low-level prospects to the Minnesota Twins for a handful of players. So Kluber for us was 5-8 and eight with a 6.57 ERA. And, and, and ridiculously high BABIP. I mean, overall, he wasn't terrible. He was still on pace for a, a three-win season. Um, that ERA, he's on pace to give up almost 270 hits. Uh, he just gave up too many hits in, in the end. He didn't give up a ton of home runs. His walk-to-strikeout ratio was kind of in line with, with where he is uh, for his career, but he just gave up too many hits. Uh, so we moved Kluber along with Jose Barcenas who was a 19-year-old starting pitcher in our Dominican Summer League, one-and-a-half star potential, and 20-year-old Logan Henderson, who is a one-star um, potential pitcher. And in return, we get a bunch. We'll start. We'll just start at the top. So we pick up 23-year-old Gabriel Masil, who is um, sort of a, you know, contact, good eye, no power. You know, he's a slap hitter. Uh, but really good at all three outfield positions, good defensively, and can handle the bat. He can bat leadoff with that skill set. He's not going to hit for a lot of power, but he can bat leadoff with that skill set. So 23 years old, I uh, would pick up Gabriel Macias. At worst, he's a fourth outfielder, and that has value in cores when you can play all three outfield positions like that. He will start in Albuquerque. We pick up Gilberto Celestino, who's probably the best bat. Actually, he's not the best bat of the bunch. He's probably the second to best bat of the bunch. I'll show you the best here in a second. Can play right field, can play center field, can likely play left as well. Again, better contact uh, than Macias, but still good outfielder, good speed, uh, and better with the bat. He will also start in triple A. Uh, so we pick up a couple of hitters who can take advantage of cores. You know, maybe hit 8 to 10 home runs, but... You know, hit close to 300 with a decent on-base percentage and play good defense and steal some bases and in cores, that's perfect. 23-year-old minor league second baseman Aramis Adaman, or Ad Adaman, Adaman. Um, he is, he's going to be a backup infielder. He's going to be a backup middle infielder. Uh, but again, same sort of skill set, low contact, really good eye, good discipline, good speed, good defense. Um, he will likely be our backup middle infielder next season. Um, we'll have him in McKinstry as sort of those super utility type guys. I'll, I'll try to expand, uh, I'll try to expand his play. In fact, we might do that now. We might try to make him a third baseman, uh, this year while he's in the minors, uh, to see if we can, in fact, let's do that. Let's do that right now before I forget. Uh, set game strategy. We want to use him at third base. Uh, speaking of third base, we also pick up a 20, where is he? 24 year old third baseman, Spencer Steer. Uh, and you see kind of what I'm doing here, right? I'm, I'm trying to get some, some higher on base, uh, higher batting average type guys to get into the lineup to uh, be on base for the, the Joey Gallows and the Josh Naylors and the, the Zach Veens when they come up. So uh, Steer's not a great defensive player, uh, but he's better with the bat than, than some of those other players. Really good eye, good gap power. He'll start in double-A. Uh, Hartford. And the last piece, and this one was more for fun, but he has a bit of a bat. So uh, Williams as uh, Williams Astudlio, and, and those of you who are familiar with the Twins uh, know who this player is, and he's sort of a, 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 a real-life meme. 
Uh, he's got a pretty good bat, uh, 56 contact, 50 power, 47 home run, 100 avoid K, catcher, first base, third base, left field, right field. He's going to be called up uh, here in just a second because we are going to call it a day with Marwin Gonzalez. Call a studio up, and he will back up at multiple different positions when it's all said and done. Um, oops. Just a fun player to have. Uh, can play multiple positions and can hit a little bit. So that's not where I wanted to go. I wanted to go to major logs. So that's that was deal number one. Um, yeah, so that's deal number one. And he's ARB eligible. Not Probably not making a lot of money, but uh, we'll be able to... Um, yeah, I mean, you can see he hit 320 or 375 last year in limited time with the Twins. So he can hit a bit. Second deal we made was with the Arizona Diamondbacks. We sent Kyle Freeland. Uh, we are retaining his contract this year, uh, the 5.75. He was ARB eligible next year, making more, and we probably weren't going to keep him. But 4-8 and eight with a 4-2-8 ERA. He was having a nice bounce back season compared to last year, but we felt it was time to move on from him. So we, we sent uh, Freeland retaining his salary along with uh, Brandon Crawford. Um, and we retained 30% of his salary. Crawford had hit far better than I anticipated this year. Uh, 326, 393, 517, 1.9 war, really good defense. Um, but it was time to move on from him because we weren't going to resign him. So we wanted to get something in return. Uh, and a couple of minor league fillers, Eddie Diaz, a 22 year old who's in, well, he was in a ball for us. Uh, and Nico Dicolati, a two, one and a half star, two star right field prospect to Arizona. In exchange, we get 24 year old Luis Frias, starting pitcher. Um, three potentially really good pitches. He's still young enough that if this is where he ends up, that's a decent fifth starter. Uh, if his control can get better, he could even be better. So he'll start in. Double A for us. Uh, we also pick up right fielder Dominic Fletcher, and this is where I went a little outside of outside of the box compared to the last trade we made. Fletcher's a power bat, a good right fielder, uh, but has some power. Hit 17 home runs last year in Triple A. Is it seven or in double A? Is it seven home runs so far this year in triple uh, A? He's going to start in triple A for us this year, um, but will likely be up before it's all said and done. Um, can hit lefties and righties equally, so uh, I liked picking up Dominic Fletcher. Uh, we pick up Stuart Fairchild, who again is just a you know contact eye, good defense, good speed type player, backup, you know organizational filler but what we need you know defense and defense and speed and then matt peacock who is a 28 year old swing man um one and three with a 696 era in triple a but he's a sinker slider pitcher three good pitches good movement he's an extreme ground ball pitcher we're going to try him in the uh, lineup or in the rotation and see how he does uh, so those were the two deals we've made. We had to DFA a bunch of players. Austin Gomber, Dom Nunez, Marwin Gonzalez. Um, yeah, so we had to DFA a bunch of players to, to make these deals happen. Uh, I don't think we're done yet. Um, I don't think there's room on our team anymore for Ramiel Tapia. Um, not at $3 million anyway. Are we a man short? Yeah, we are. We're a player short. So where are we short? We have our 13 pitchers. So I would say an outfielder because McKinstry can play all over. Uh, Studlio can play multiple positions. So I would say an outfielder. So I think it's Dominic Fletcher time. So let's readjust our lineups here. So let's just clear everything and let's pretend that we are starting over. So batting ratings. <clears throat> So Joey Gallo is going to be our number four hitter. Uh, who is our best hitter? Colton Welker is our best hitter uh, right now because our best hitter is actually on the disabled list. Uh, but we're going to bat Brendan Rodgers third. We're going to bat Welker fifth. 
McKinstry is either going to be bat lead off or second. I haven't decided yet. Um, Peraza will bat lead off. McKinstry, where's McKinstry going to play? We play Welker at first. Yeah, we play Welker at first. McKinstry at third, right? Yeah, McKinstry's going to play third. And Peraza's going to play short. All right. So we need a left fielder, a center fielder, and a catcher. So Fletcher, we're going to give Fletcher a shot here in the left. We're going to throw him out there every day and see how he does. Michael Taylor's, no, Jamison, no. No, 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 no. Jamison Hanna and Ali Sanchez. Yeah, so that's what I want to do. I want to, in fact, I think I want to move Hanna up. He's hit the, he hit the ball so well, and I think I want to do that. So Taylor hasn't been bad. The offense is slipping a little bit, but I think he's better served as a as a bench bat. So, <clears throat> and he and Fletcher, I guess, will rotate, and I'm okay with that. I'm fine with with letting the the AI sort of adjust all of that for us. Um, so let's copy that. <clears throat> let's paste. So we can designated hitter. Uh, against righties. How's Beatty? Beatty's, wow, Beatty's actually better against lefties. That's bizarre. Okay. Uh, we're going to bat Astudlio as a designated hitter. We'll stick him in the nine hole. And then against lefties. All right, so against lefties, we're going to need to switch things around a little bit. So against lefties, we're going to bring Taylor in for Fletcher. Uh, and I think we just do this. We move that and move that, and I'm fine with that. Yep, I'm fine with that. So copy that lineup. Let's paste. And a studio against designated hitter. All right. So we got a bit of a new look lineup. Um, couple of deals, which were to be expected. It's what we needed to do. Um, you know, it wasn't about money. It was about asset development. Um, we've picked up some additional assets, I think. So <clears throat> let's uh, move on. So we are currently on a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've won eight of our last nine as we go. Uh, we'll play these six games, get up to the, the um, all-star game. And then I'm going to go back offline and see if I can make any more deals. So let's move forward. We lose two to one. Lose four nothing. Man, the Dodgers just have our number as we win seven six there. Let's play our last three games before the All Star break against the Padres. Five nothing loss. Four to three loss, and then the final game before the trade deadline or the All Star game is a ten to six loss. So we win at eight out of nine, and then immediately lose six or five out of six. That's our season in a nutshell. Uh, anything interesting happened? So Jason Jones signed, Jackson Ferris signed. So let's go in here and make sure that we have disabled promotions on these guys does that mean we still haven't signed drones yeah we still haven't signed drew jones or ryan clifford it's fine though all right uh all stars uh, all stars who made the all-star team as a rocky michael king five and nine with a three two six era uh, is he the only one? He is the only one who made the team for us. The prospects game, though. We should have a few players in here, I would think. Jack Leiter. Drew Romo. And that's it. No Zach Veen. Okay. That's fine, though. Romo's hitting. He's hitting in double A now, guys. Guys, he's hitting in double A. 299, 352, 495. Fantastic. All right. So let's look at how some of our new players have done since we brought them over. Fletcher is a 1 for 10. That's not a good look. Um, Hannah's continuing to hit. We put we called up Peter Lambert, put him in. 
uh, as a uh, ground ball type specialist. And he's still young enough that, you know, he's still got plenty of development room. Um, five innings in his one start, or seven innings in his one start, gave up five runs. Matt Peacock in his one start gave up three runs in five and a third. Okay. All right. So who's left that needs to be moved? Now look at all these contracts expiring. Um, I mean, nobody's safe, right? I mean, I think Michael Taylor, I like, you know, so we may hang on to him and see if we can bring him back next year. But Morton, if we can find a taker, is gone. Chafin, if we can find a taker, he's gone. Posey, I think I would like to hold on to unless he throws a temper tantrum and uh, wants to go away. God, that was a 216. Okay. Um, Tapia, I mean, we're going to DFA him or, or non-tender him in, in uh, uh, the offseason. Same with Senzatella. He's having a good year, but I, I don't want to pay him nearly $4 million. So, um, yeah, there's still a lot of players who can be moved on from at this point. So I'm going to uh, spend a little more time here messing around. Actually, let's... A lot of players need to be designated for assignment or need to be... Marwin Gonzalez refuses, so he's going to be released. We'll eat his contract. We'll reset the minor league depth charts. And, yeah, it's time to... Time to try to make a few more moves. I'd like to get Riley Adams up. He's hitting in, in AAA, and that will mean moving Buster Posey. So um, that's an option. So I'm going to spend a little more time here uh, messing around, and when we come back, it'll be... Where will it be? It'll be the day after. It'll be here, and then we'll sim through the end of the month. So uh, I'll be back on the 22nd. Hang tight. All right, let's get back to it. So I think we're done with the deals. Uh, there were a couple players that we just we couldn't find takers for. Um, and, I mean, I could spend hours doing this, but I don't particularly feel like it as it stands. Uh, that little gap that was instant for you was about 90 minutes for me <laughs> um, just to make the two additional deals that we made. So without further ado, let's look and see exactly what those deals were. Let's get to the major transactions log. So the first one was with the Chicago Cubs, and we traded. Uh, this one was actually easy. Um, Alfonso Rivas we picked up from the Cubs for Brenton Doyle. Doyle, one-and-a-half star, two-star outfielder, can play all three positions. Uh, looks like he'll have some decent home run power, but that is about it. On the flip side, we pick up Alfonso Rivas, who, if those of you, if you've played out of the park baseball at all over the last couple of years, you're probably familiar with Rivas. He is a um, uh, good contact, good uh, plate discipline, first base slash left fielder. Isn't going to hit for a lot of power, but you can see his numbers in Iowa this year. Put up a 939 OPS, almost as many walks as strikeouts. Uh, we're going to keep him on the big league roster and probably stick him in the lineup right away to get some of that high on base percentage up in to the top of the lineup up there with Jamis and Hannah. Get a couple of players with some high on base percentages ahead of uh, Gallo and Rogers and, and, and Welker. So that's the first deal. Second deal, and this one took, believe, believe it or not, this took forever. Um, I just, I was, I just, I badly wanted to move ta uh, Tapia's. Um, contract and I didn't want to just non-tender him in the offseason so we ended up making a move with the Yankees where we sent Tapia and we retained the rest of his contract so you know a million and a half or whatever it's going to be for half the season and Billy Hamilton uh <laughs> yes the Billy Hamilton who's played all season in double a for us and we pick up a 27 year old reliever in Matt Crook who isn't particularly all that great but he's an extreme ground ball pitcher good movement three good pitches so again I'm, I'm hoping that that extreme ground ball tendency along with a vastly improved defense will uh, lead to some success so um yeah I mean we have some players that I think deserve to be called up you can see our double a team is just stacked right now Romo Veen Leiter Adaman who has he played at all yeah, he's already up to a 13 rating at third base, so fantastic. Uh, Rollison, Sean, we've got some good talent in double A. 
Single A, Celestino, and Maciel, and Frias, the three best players in single A, are the three players that are in high A that we picked up uh, at the trade deadline. Uh, and we've got some talent still in AAA. Not a whole lot, but that's fine. Still waiting on our first pick. Um, Drew Jones to agree to his contract. And I want to reset this really quickly. I want to get Rivas out there in left field. We're going to bat him second. So we've got two high on base guys at the top of our lineup. Hopefully that leads to good things for Rodgers, Gallo, and Welker. We'll see. I'm not super confident that that's going to be the case, but, you know, trying to remain optimistic. Uh, Rivas. Now we're going to stick with the lineup we have against lefties. I think leave Peraza out there to continue to get some some playing time. Is he starting to hit now? He's up to 286 on the year. Good ratings against lefties. So, um, yeah, we don't have a lot of power in our lineup, which you know is evidenced by the fact that we're like last in home runs. But um, that that's that's coming. You know, that's that's coming with some of our prospects. Um, Drew Romo has got is going to be well above average, and Zach Veen is going to be well well above average. So. Power's coming. Uh, we just need those players who can get on base ahead of them, and that's Hannah, Rivas, Brendan Rodgers getting on base in front of Veen and Romo and um, uh, Gallo and, and whatnot. So, all right, let's let's uh, let's move on here. Let's get to this last half of uh, July And see how things go. So Devin Mann eligible to come off the DL. That's fine. BD can go down. Call Mann up. Let's go with the schedule. And let's uh, move on. Let's see how post-All-Star game goes for us. We win 8-2. Uh, Charlie Morton. I may try to move him one more time right at the trade deadline. But for now, we'll put him on a rehab assignment. So how did that game go? Hannah reached three times, scored three runs. Brendan Rodgers, three for five with four runs knocked in. McKinstry hit another home run. And Lambert pitched really, really well, 2-0. Very nice, very nice. All right, schedule. Let's keep going. Game two, post-All-Star break, a 13-4 win. So good first couple games after the trade, after the uh, All-Star game. Joey Gallo, two for five, three runs knocked in. Brendan Rodgers, three hits, two RBIs. Uh, Hannah and Rivas got on base four times, scored two runs. Perfect. Gallo tripled and homered. Peraza with his first home run, so he's coming along nicely. Oops, I got to shut that off. And Murphy gets the win in this one. He's only two stars as a starting pitcher, but he's getting it done. So we'll continue to leave him out there. Can we sweep the Diamondbacks? We can. We win 12 to 8. So three straight wins coming out of the All-Star break for the Rockies. Hannah's up to 417 on the year. Gallo, three more runs, scored three more RBIs, another home run. He's got his average up to 221. Uh starting to uh he's hit a, a bit of a uh, a hot stretch here, so that's good. Ali Sanchez, three for three. Taylor with three RBIs. Peraza with two triples. Schmidt got lit up a little bit, but the bullpen came through nicely. Schmidt gave up six runs and three, but only two runs and six hits the rest of the way for the bullpen. Excellent. All right, so we get a day off and then two against Oakland and then three more against Arizona to finish it up. So let's see how we finish up July, which has by far been our best month as we lose 10-8 to eight to Oakland and we win 4-3. Two hits for Hannah. Peacock goes the first five. Ian Hamilton picks up the win. He's 4-0. As a member of the Rockies with a 3-1-3 ERA. He's pitched well. That was a nice pickup for us. Uh, schedule. All right, so we get a day off and then three games in Arizona to finish off uh, July. Let's see how we do in game one. We win 7-5. John Duplantier out for four weeks. Give us a chance to call Charlie Morton back up. 
Uh, stick Morton in the lineup for Peacock. Rivas two for four, three runs scored. So again, four runs out of the top of that, uh, out of that those top two, uh, those top two positions in the lineups. It's exactly what it is we're looking for. Joey Gallo, two more home runs. Yeah, Gallo up to twenty five home runs now. He's starting to rake here. That's what we wanted to see. Lambert went six, but again, the bullpen got it done for us. Uh, all right, so one more game before we look to move. Uh, before we look for any last-minute deals, not that I'm suspecting we'll see any, but let's see what happens against Arizona. A 9-2 loss. All right, so let's check notes here. Claudio was day-to-day -day for three days. All right, so we while we're in a rebuilding situation, we're not in a place where, you know, we necessarily need to not be looking for you know long-term talent you know we can we can find players who are sign who are um you know maybe a little older uh but are skilled you know and we can we can find a home for them so uh anybody of note out there javi baez jeff mcneil Wouldn't mind an eighty contact guy in cores. What do the what do the Mets want for Jeff McNeil? He's only thirty. King Lighter Sam. I'm not giving up any of those players for McNeil, but we can talk about this. I am willing to discuss this with you. Do I want to give up Brendan Rodgers? I mean, McNeil's a better hitter. Rogers is a better fielder. And that really goes against everything I've talked about in terms of how I'm trying to put this team together. But if I can do it without giving up a ton, yeah, like that seems like an... Ugh. This seems like an obvious deal to me. Jeff McNeil for Willie MacGyver and Josh Fuentes. We don't give up anything on our big league roster. Um, we could just stick McNeil at first. Just have him play first base and Welker can, can move over to third and McKinstry can go back to that super sub role. We're gonna make that deal. Fan interest that yeah, as it should. So we'll send man down. Call McNeil up and let's reset that line. We're gonna put McNeil in at first. Uh, we'll make Welker the third. I mean, we we weaken our our corner defense this way. Um, but I'm okay with that. And in the off season, if we move on from Rodgers, which is a possibility, I guess. Um, then we have a, a tailor-made second baseman or first baseman, depending on... Yeah, I mean, look, he becomes four stars as a first baseman. And then with Naylor, we just we have a lot of flexibility with, with, with the players we currently have. So uh, um, McNeil is going to be in at... As a first baseman, he can hit lefties fine, right? Yeah, better than what we currently have. All right, so we're going to run with that. And uh, let's just quickly see if Morton can get anything. I mean, I he, ha he hasn't, no one's been, they haven't been, in, no one's been interested in him at all here during, uh, uh, during the season. And I don't suspect that's going to change now. So just make one more, uh, one more, Offer and, and see what happens. Yeah, nobody wants him. Okay. So we get Naylor back in three to four, six to seven weeks. 
He can play first, left, and right. McNeil can play. Yeah, so we're going to have a lot of flexibility with our lineup. So we are going to have to uh, pay attention and shuffle some stuff around, but I'm okay with that. All right, so there's our new lineup. Hannah, Rivas, Rogers, Gallo, Welker, McNeil, Peraza, and Sanchez. Naylor will be back in six to seven weeks. And let's uh, play <coughs> the let's play the final game of the month, final game of the episode. And then we'll recap, and that'll be that. All right, we win 2 nothing. Clark Schmidt pitches really, really well. Goes eight shutout innings. Martinez picks up his 24th save. Jamison Hanna scores two more runs, hitting 395 on the season. McNeil goes one for two in his uh, rocky debut. Jamison Hanna. Let's, okay, let's do this first. So let's look at... Just go to the team home screen. So info, 15 and 9 in the month of July. Things are starting to come around here a little bit, I think, I hope, for the Rockies. We have some real young talent coming up, and we've got some players who are who are who are doing pretty well so far. So let's take a look at pitching. Michael King, 5 and 10. He was uh, our lone all-star, 3-4-2 ERA. Um Giving up less than a hit in inning in cores, I will take it. An ERA of 131, ERA plus of 131, I should say. Radio Martinez has been great as our closer. Uh, 24 saves, 2.63 ERA. Only had one really bad outing. Uh, Patrick Murphy, again, as a two-star, I mean, I don't think he's long for the rotation, but he's pitching well. 3-3-1 ERA, 3-6-3 FIP. So, I mean, it's, those are real numbers. Clark Schmidt has had a much better season compared to last season. I mean, just look at this. He's only thrown 20 innings or 20, only pitched in 20 games this year, and he's already got more innings than he had in 33 games a year ago. Cut down on his hits, his runs, uh, significantly on his walks. He's upped his strikeouts. He's been pretty good for us. Ian Hamilton, one of our waiver wire pickups, has been great. I mean, no complaints here, right? Uh, 23 strikeouts against only two walks. He's 4-0. Charlie Morton uh, is going to be with us through the rest of the year and hopefully he can eat some innings up and not get hurt. Uh, Alex Claudio, again, I think he's getting exposed, probably playing against lefties or against righties. Um, Senzatella has uh, been okay. He's been fine. Uh, not worth what we're going to pay him, but he's been okay. Wendelkin has uh, been all right. Uh, the extreme fly, the fly ball is a bit of an issue, but he's striking batters out, only walked seven. Uh, just giving up too many home runs. So if you can cut back on that just a little, I think we'll have something good there. Chafin, a bit of a disappointment to be uh, to be honest, especially if you look at his um, season last year against Chicago. Uh, strikeouts are up and his walks are down. It's the home runs. I mean, give up .6 home runs per nine last year. He's given up two. He's given up six home or he's given up six home runs in 27 innings. So not a good season for him. Crook, uh, perfect in three innings so far. No runs. Lambert's 2-0 with a 5-0-3 in his two starts. And then Peacock with a 5-2-3 in his two starts. So our pitching staff, we don't have anybody who's a negative war. Compared to where we were last year, I will take it. Good year-over-year -year improvement. And offensively, uh, things are starting to uh, come around here a little bit. We just picked up Jeff McNeil, one for two in his first start. Joey Gallo up to 25 home runs, 59 knocked in on pace for a 40 home run season. 835 OPS and a 3.6 war. He has also been um, significantly above average out in right field, so I'll take it. Ali Sanchez having a really nice season. The, the job is his until Romo is ready, so uh, if he can continue to hit like that, we will be in good shape. Jamison Hanna has been an absolute, absolute revelation for us in 33 games. He's hitting 395. 436, 535, that BABIP, a cool 495. Doing a nice job at the top of the lineup for us. Brendan Rodgers has slipped compared to last year. We're at 26 home runs, only on pace for 15 this year. Uh, and his ratings, frankly, are, are down a little bit. So uh, this may be somebody we look to move on from in the offseason, depending on what he wants in arbitration. Zach McKinstry's done a pretty nice job all over the field, I think. Let's take a look. 
I mean, he's been above average at second and third, below average at short left and right, but that's fine. Um, just get him some more playing time in the outfield during spring training next year, and I think he'll be just fine. Uh, Michael Taylor's done a nice job for us uh, defensively. Not really hitting, but defensively. Colton Welker slipped a little bit down to 741 OPS. Not really showing any power either, which is a bit of a surprise. Buster Posey's hitting well. He's not happy, uh, but he's hitting okay. Um, 734 OPS. Dominic Fletcher is uh, 2 for 18. What is it, 2 for 18 since coming over to us? 4 for 18. With a couple of doubles, six strikeouts. Uh, Studlio, three for 13 with... uh, (laughs) Four for 13 with three doubles and a triple. So uh, extra base hitting machine. Uh, Oswald Peraza, uh, he's also starting to come around a little bit, up to a 742 OPS. And then Alfonso Rivas is four for 17, but has walked four times, 381 on base percentage. Having him in that two hole is nice. So I think... um, yeah, so we're we're in in okay shape. Uh, if we look at some of our our main prospects, I'm still waiting for that control to creep up just a hair for lighter. It looks like he's going to spend the full season at Double A, so he'll probably start next season in Triple A, and that's fine. Um, Willie Acevedo, um, still in the international complex, he's down to two star. And Drew Romo is continuing to hit, and his ratings are continuing to improve. 299, 355, 504 in AA. He'll probably spend the rest of the season there. He'll start in AAA next year as well. As for the rest of our prospects, um, Estrada was our international international signing this past season, so he'll be in the international complex for a while. Andrew Patrick, uh, 246, 312, 515 so far in uh, rookie ball. He'll probably spend the rest of the season there, move up to short season next year, or I guess regular A ball next season. Zach Veen, um, hitting pretty well in double A, 309, 395, 532. I think I want to leave him in double A for the rest of the year just because he's only 20. Uh, he'll be in triple A with Romo next season, ticketed for the bigs at some point during next year. Uh, Peraza and Hanny, you know about Riley Adams. Um, we will probably call him up at the um, end of August and let him get that playing time uh, behind Sanchez, and that'll be it for um, Buster Posey. So he's 26. He's not happy, but we'll, we'll call him up shortly, and he should be fine. Uh, Rivas, we talked about. Ataman is up to a 28 at third base already, so this is working nicely. Um, let him continue to get some work at all those infield positions. I'm just looking for a ton of flexibility. So between him and McKinstry, we have basically the entirety of the diamond covered. Um, Stuart Fairchild, he was one of our pickups uh, at the trade deadline from Arizona. Nine for 28 so far in double A. Um, and the rest of these guys we've looked at, I think, at, at one point or another. I want to take a look at. I forgot about Luke Lido. We signed him last year, or we drafted him last year. How's he doing? Uh, not really pitching, but that's fine. Uh, 12 for 52 hitting this year. Contact, I don't know if he's ever going to hit enough, but um, we'll keep plugging away with him and see how he does. I want to take a look at the two guys we got from the Twins. Uh, yeah, Celestino doesn't belong there. He's hitting far to 450 in uh, in high A ball. So we'll send him up to AAA and we'll let him finish in AAA. Um, Masil, we're going to put him in AA. And disable the promotion. I don't know why it did that. Anybody else deserve to be moved up? Spencer Steer deserves to be moved up just because of his performance. Uh, Ottoman, we're going to put him at third, or put him in uh, AAA and disable his promotion and let him stay there. 
Yeah, so I think, guys, I think we're in pretty good shape. The the uh, Oh, there's Drew Jones. We got him locked down, so let's disable his promotion. And how's he hitting so far? Nine for his first 33. Okay, striking out a bunch, but nine for his first 33. All right, so we'll keep an eye on him. Uh, and that's going to do it for this episode. So next episode will probably just be August. Uh, August into September, maybe. I, I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. I'm I'm off all of next week, so I have some additional time to do some recording. And I am going to be doing uh, a live stream, I think, uh, for the off-season of this year. So today's Friday, so this video will probably get posted on, I'm guessing, Monday. Then I'll have one more episode. So my next episode may be August through the end of the season. And then a week from tomorrow on Saturday, May, what is that date? May what? May 6th? May 7th? May 8th. Saturday, May 8th. I think I'm going to be doing a live stream. I'm still working out the, the, the glitches, or not the glitches, but still working out the details with the guys over at GM Games to figure out exactly how we're going to do that. But I think I'm going to do a live stream for the off season, so you guys can sit there with me as I bumble through all of my trade uh, trade decisions and free agent signings and, and everything else. So look, f uh, look for some more information on that. Uh, again, guys, check out my channel at Around the World Sports. Drop me a subscribe over there. Hope you like what you've seen. If you have any questions or suggestions or whatever, uh, let me know, and we'll talk to everybody soon. Bye-bye.